into your system. I intrude through three-dimensional reality. And you must interpret what happens in the light of your own root assumptions. Now, whether or not you realize it, each of you intrudes into other systems of reality in your dream states without the full participation of your normally conscious self. In subjective experience, you leave behind physical existence and act at times with strong purpose and creative validity within dreams that you forget the instant you awaken. When you think of the purpose of your existence, you think in terms of daily waking life, but you also work at your purpose in these other dream dimensions and you are then in communication with other portions of your own entity at work at endeavors quite as valid as those you are about in waking life. When I contact your reality, therefore, it is as if I were entering one of your dreams. I can be aware of myself as I dictate this book through Jane Roberts, and yet also be aware of myself in my own environment. For I send only a portion of myself here as you Perhaps send a portion of your consciousness as you write a letter to a friend and yet are aware of the room in which you sit. I send out much more than you do in a letter for a portion of my consciousness is now within the entranced woman as I dictate. But the analogy is close enough. My environment, as I mentioned earlier, is not one of a personality recently dead in your terms, but... Later, I will describe what you can expect under those conditions. One large difference between your environment and mine is that you must physically materialize mental acts as physical matter. We understand the reality of mental acts and recognize their brilliant validity. We accept them for what they are and therefore we are beyond the necessity to materialize them and interpret them in such a rigid manner. Your earth was very dear to me. I can now turn the focus of my consciousness toward it and, if I choose, experience it as you do. But I can also perceive it in many ways that you cannot in your time. Now, some of you who read this book will immediately and intuitively grasp what I'm saying, for you will have already suspected that you are viewing experience through highly distorted, though colorful, figurative lenses. Remember also that if physical reality is in a larger sense an illusion, it is an illusion caused by a greater reality. The illusion itself has a purpose and a meaning. Perhaps it is better to say that physical reality is one form that reality takes. In your system, however, you are focused much more intensely upon one relatively small aspect of experience. We can travel freely through varying numbers of such realities. Our experience at this point includes our work in each. I do not mean to minimize the importance of your present personalities nor of physical existence. To the contrary, three-dimensional experience is an invaluable place of training. Your personality, as you now know it, will indeed persevere and with its memories. But it is only a part of your entire identity, even as your childhood in this life is an extremely important part of your present personality, though now you are far more than a child. You will continue to grow and develop, and you will become aware of other environments, even as you left your childhood home. But environments are not objective things conglomeration of objects that exist independently of you. 
Instead, you form them, and they are quite literally expressions of yourself. Materialized mental acts that extend outward from your consciousness. I will tell you exactly how to form your environment. I form mine following the same rules, though you end up with physical objects, and I do not. End of part five of chapter three, Seth speaks, the eternal validity of the soul. Let's talk about it. In this passage, Seth is conveying several key points. First off, intrusion into reality and dream states. When entering your system, Seth suggests that he enters into your reality uh, much like a dream intrudes into your conscious awareness. He points out that people also intrude other systems of reality during their dream states, operating with strong purpose and creativity, even though they forget these experiences upon waking. Number two, multi-dimensional existence. Seth highlights the idea that existence is not limited to the waking physical world. He explains that while individuals primarily consider their purpose within daily life, they also work on their purposes within dream dimensions. In these dream states, individuals interact with other parts of their own entity, engaging in endeavors that are just as valid as their waking life activities. Number three, communication and interaction. Seth compares his contact with reality to entering a dream. He explains that he can communicate with people's reality acting through a channel like Jane Roberts, while also being aware of his own environment. This communication is like sending out a part of his consciousness similar to how someone sends out their focus when writing a letter. Number four, environment and reality differences. Seth differentiates his environment from the reader's environment. He is not a recently deceased personality and he describes differences between the way his environment functions and how physical reality functions. For instance, he points out that mental acts in his reality are not materialized as physical matter, unlike in our reality. Number five, perception and experience. Seth discusses his ability to perceive and experience Earth. He can view it in ways that humans cannot due to their limited perspective. He also suggests that some individuals will intuitively understand this message as they may already suspect that their experience of reality is subject to distortion. Number six, physical reality and illusion. Seth presents the idea that physical reality is a particular form that reality takes, suggesting that it is not the only valid perspective. He acknowledges that physical reality has purpose and meaning and that it serves as a training ground for personal growth. Lastly, formation of environments. Seth explains that environments are not external objective entities, but rather extensions of consciousness. He states that individuals and he himself form their environments based on similar rules though the outcomes differ. Humans create physical objects while he does not. In essence, Seth here is sharing his perspective on the nature of reality, the interconnectedness of different dimensions of existence, and the way environments are created through consciousness. He also emphasizes the significance of personal growth and the expansion of awareness beyond the confines of everyday waking life. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. Please consider sharing it with a friend. And of course, subscribing for more. 
Let me know what you thought about this particular passage. What did you think about my interpretation of it? And of course, and always, thank you for listening. Peace.